Welcome to Chess Dog. I'm John Montgomery. Today we're looking at the young chess genius, Tanatalua Adewumi. I hope I pronounced that correctly. We'll call him Tani for short, which is what he goes by. This young man has become a chess master at only 10 years of age. An incredible accomplishment, accomplishment made all the more impressive by his family's story. Just two years ago, they were a refugee family living in a homeless shelter, and their story shows great perseverance and generosity. You can find the story in a book called My Name is Tani, if you don't know it. But today, we're here to talk about Tani's chess genius, master at the age of 10. This game is against another master, Nathaniel Moore. This is an action chess tournament, which means there was a 30-minute time control. Tani grabs control very early after his opponent makes a mistake, and he never lets go. Begins with e4, Tani has the black pieces, and he plays the Sicilian, c5. His opponent rep replies knight f3, Tani plays e6, d4, cd4, knight d4, what we call the open Sicilian. Black plays a6, this is called the Khan or Paulson system, it's a, more, a little more positional system in the Sicilian. G3. So white is saying, well, I anticipate black's going to want to expand on the queen side with b5. That's one of the reasons he played a6. So I'm going to put my bishop on g2 to counteract that diagonal. But black goes ahead and plays the knight to c6. White takes it, and black, black takes with the b pawn, capturing towards the center. That's a principle that oftentimes, when you are capturing with a pawn, you want to capture towards the center. Bishop g2 as planned, knight to f6. So white responds by playing e5. He wants to gain space and kick that knight on f6 out of the way. Unfortunately, the geometry of the chessboard is not on white's side here. Uh, that move is premature. He should have played it maybe after he castled, because now queen to a5, check. Checks the king at e1 and attacks the pawn at e5 and the e5 pawn is going to drop. It, it's lost. Knight to c3, blocking the check and developing a piece. Now queen takes e5, check. And black is already in a very good position. Uh, but Tani never lets go. He keeps making accurate move after accurate move, and he never gives his opponent a chance to save his position. Bishop e3, blocking the check. But that bishop on e3 is now pinned. So Tani plays bishop to c5, piling on the pressure on that bishop on e3. Queen to d2, defending the bishop. Now, boom, knight to g4, applying even more pressure to that bishop on e3. So now the queen, the knight, and the bishop are all piling on to the e3 square. So white plays knight to e4, trying to block that pin. The knight is defended by the bishop at g2, at this point, he's hoping to survive. Tani takes on e3 with the bishop. f e3, now d5. He wants to kick that knight away so he can then take the pawn at e3. White, knowing he can't allow that to happen, to be down two pawns in this position would be hopeless. He counterattacks. Bishop f3, he attacks White's knight on g4. Black takes at b2 grabbing a pawn, but more importantly, he threatens that rook at a1, so white doesn't have time to recapture the knight on g4. White castles, making his king a bit safer, and also connecting rooks, so black cannot take the rook at a1 anymore. Black plays knight to e5. Now, black is still threatening to take that knight on e4 with the pawn, and he's also aiming that knight at that bishop on f3. Right now, that bishop is defended, but if you'll notice the geometry of the chessboard, on that square, he would also be forking the king and the queen. And his queen is attacking a1, so the position is under too much pressure. White plays knight to g5 to defend that bishop on f3, but the entire house of cards is about to collapse. All it needs is just a little push. And Tani gives it that push right now. h Six. That knight is in, in big trouble. 
and basically he can, he can no longer protect it. So for example, if he, let's say he tries to save the knight by playing knight to h3, moving it away from the threat of the h-pawn. Now Tani could, say, could win in a couple of ways. He could take the rook on a1 with his queen, and then when his queen is recaptured, that rook is no longer defending that bishop on f3. Knight takes f3, check, would fork the king and the queen, easily winning. Another way is he could just actually just take that bishop immediately, forcing the recapture by the rook, and then he just plays queen to a1, check, and again has a completely decisive material advantage. His opponent, uh, again a master, so he, he sees all of this, he plays rook f to b1, hoping to complicate matters, and then Tani just takes the knight at g5 with the pawn. White retreats the bishop to e2 to avoid that fork. If he just takes the queen, then knight takes f3, check, gets the queen via that fork, which has just been hovering over, over white for so long. So he plays bishop e2, queen to a3, the queen was under immediate attack by the rook. Rook to b3, attacking the queen again. Queen to d6, e4. Now, black cannot take the e-pawn with his d-pawn because it's pinned. White would just play queen takes queen. So, queen to c5, check. Stepping outside of that pin with check. White has to respond to the check. King to g2, now he takes the pawn at e4. White plays rook to d1. Now, this is a little devious. He's threatening mate at d8. Now, Tani, of course, would never allow that to happen. He sees this and defends by playing bishop to d7. The queen can't take, take that bishop because it's defended by the knight on e5. Uh, by the way, if you're getting value from this video, please like and subscribe and click the uh, bell to be notified for future videos. White plays rook to b7 piling on that d7 bishop, rook to d8, defending the bishop, rook to b3, then f6. This is a consolidating move that protects that knight on e5, and now the game essentially is, is over. White plays a3, black plays king to f7, rook to b7, and before I show you this great finishing combination, if you think Tani is going to become a Grand Master, please comment below and say the age you think he's going to be when he gets there. Keep in mind, he's 10 years old and a Master right now. Tani plays Rook takes H2 check, and his opponent resigned in this position. And the reason he resigned is this. If he plays King to F1, then Black just plays Queen to F2, and it is checkmate. And the only other option he has is to actually take that rook with his king. But if he does, queen to f2, check. And after king to h1, rook to h8, check. And he can block block it once, and, but after bishop h5, rook takes bishop, checkmate. The game is over. A fantastic game from a fantastically young, talented player, Tana Talua Arawumi. And we're rooting for your future success. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog.